We have a major breakthrough. Big breakthrough. Major breakthrough on the Dodo, Dodo D extension, extension project. project. Humanity may be one step closer to bringing back the dodo from extinction, which has been extinct for about 400 years now. Colossal Biosciences. Colossal Biosciences. Colossal Biosciences announced. We are going to bring back the dodo. This poor old bird, the first animal species that human beings actually exterminated. And so now we talk about being as dead as a dodo. Dead as a dodo. Dead as a dodo. Dead as a dodo. Dead as the dodo. Dead as a dodo. I'm making it very clear. What's the goal of the Dodo De-Extinction Project? It, it's in the name. We're de-extincting a dodo. For better or for worse, the dodo has become a global icon for human-caused extinction. We see them in Alice in Wonderland. We see them on paintings and books. There, are, Everybody says, oh, look at that really stupid bird that just walked up to people and went extinct. There goes our last female. No, dodos were not dumb. Dodos were really well adapted to the particular environment that they lived in. They really didn't have any natural predators in Mauritius and they never needed to worry about people. Some steamed toast and a dodo egg. But I think the dodo went extinct. Get going! They went extinct because they laid a single egg in a nest on the forest floor. And when people arrived in Mauritius, they brought things with them. Some things on purpose, like dogs and cats and pigs, and some things by accident, like rats. And a egg in a nest on the ground is a pretty easy meal for a rat. <laughs> Apparently they tasted delicious. <laughs> the ultimate goal of the Dodo Project is to bring back the Dodo to Mauritius. So when it comes to genome engineering in birds, it's actually really complicated because they produce these big eggs and they have to lay these eggs where you've got the embryo developing inside. It actually makes it quite difficult for us to do some of these early manipulations. It's not possible to clone birds because we don't have access to the egg cell, the cell that will eventually be fertilized and become a developing chick in the same way that we do in mammals. When a chicken egg is laid, that developing embryo is about 24 hours old. There's a ton of bird in there. At that point, we can't stick a needle into the egg and suck out one cell that we're gonna edit and then transform into another bird. It's just not possible. But there's another way. We have figured out pigeon primordial germ cell culture. So what that means is that the cells that we need to edit to make the dodo, we now know how to collect those, how to grow them in culture, how to make more of them, and how to put them back into embryo. Okay, I'm gonna have to stop you right there. Primordial germ cells are the only immortal cell. You think about any life on Earth, that's the one cell that stayed alive the whole time that's been passed down from, from one generation to the next generation. So they just provide this very unique way that we can start to edit and manipulate genomes we can go on to produce other animals from these incredibly unique cells. The primordial germ cells, or PGCs, these are the cells that will eventually become either sperm or eggs, depending on if it's a male or a female. They are circulating throughout the bloodstream of that developing chick. And at that point, we can stick a needle into that egg and without harming the bird, suck out some of that blood. And that blood will contain these PGCs. We want to edit those. The only bird for which the recipe was known to keep those PGCs healthy and living and dividing in a dish in the lab was chickens. This was true for 40 years. And then we solved it for pigeons. This is a huge step in our dodo de-extinction project. Genetics is a powerful force. The dodo itself was a pigeon, and because we see that kind of for each bird group, there probably needs to be some adjustment of the PGC culture media so that we can successfully grow these cells, we'll be able to port that media recipe over to Nicobar pigeon. And Nicobar pigeon, right, is our closest living relative to the dodo, and now it'll be those cells that we'll be editing to make the dodo. We've now made our surrogate gene-edited chickens that don't make their own primordial germ cells. When we inject in our gene-edited ones, we'll migrate to the gonad, they will make a little home there and they will turn into either egg or sperm 
of exactly what it is that we have gene edited and not what that particular chicken is. Does that kind of make sense? Was that confusing? Okay, break it down in terms of, well, I, uh, I'm, okay, I, I think I'm getting you. This is the process that we're using to eventually bring a dodo back to life. First, the scientists edit the PGCs. They create the right conditions for the PGCs to grow in culture. That means in a dish in the lab. And then they use the targets from our analysis of the dodo genome to edit those PGCs. Next, surrogate chickens are edited so they don't make their own germ cells. This clears the way for the edited pigeon PGCs to take the place of those germ cells. When these chickens lay eggs, the chicks developing inside these eggs won't have any germ cells. Our scientists can inject the edited pigeon PGCs into the chicken embryos developing inside these eggs. Its DNA is unedited chicken DNA. Its germ cells, though, those are pigeon germ cells. Once these males and females mature, they will mate. And when the hen lays an egg, it will look like an ordinary chicken egg. But the chick developing inside is a pigeon embryo. Finally, a pigeon squab hatches. And this little bird carries the original edits made to those pigeon PGCs. We have brought those edits to life in a living bird. Pretty straightforward, right? PGCs are really important because they are the cell type that contributes to the next generation. If at some point there's, there's a bird that is threatened with extinction or even goes extinct fully, we can take those cells, put them back into surrogates, and actually make more of those birds. So one of the other really great things that we're developing as well is a way to start to grow cells from being just pulling a feather out of any of these endangered bird species that we might like to work on. So you can actually capture the bird, just pluck a feather out from that. At the base of the feather, there are living cells that we can actually culture and grow out and then we can freeze them and biobank them down. And that will protect against the loss of that species, but also against the loss of biodiversity from that species too. So specific variation from that particular bird will be frozen in time. Now the dodo was the very first species that I worked on in ancient DNA. And uh, to me, it's a little bit of a, of a guiding light for this project. The dodo is an icon for the terrible things that people can do and driving species to extinction. But this project means that we could change that. The dodo could become an icon of what we can do with our big brains and our desire to make the world a better place. <laughs>